Hello, I'm John Sargent and welcome to Argumental, the show where the hottest names in comedy debate the biggest issues facing mankind. Issues like murder, why isn't there a law against it? <laughs> How much better would synchronised swimming be if they added a shark? <laughs> Will Peter Andre blossom now that he can concentrate fully on his music career? Here to argue such burning issues and others like them are our teams. In the red corner with Marcus Brigstock this week, it's Sean Locke. <laughs> and joining Rufus Hound in the blue corner, please welcome Stephen K. Amos. OK, let's kick off with round one, where we debate a big issue that gets us frothing at the mouth, as if we had rabies or were Amy Winehouse. <laughs> Tonight, we're talking about state benefits. Scroungers, those benefit-bleeding job dodgers, taking our cash and smoking our fags. It's a constructive day if they make it to the sofa in time for Trisha. Want a bigger house? Then pop out another kid and get one for free. Easy. These days, there's no need to lie about looking for work either. There's no chance of finding a job because there aren't any. <laughs> hey, Sponger, <laughs> you've never had it so good. <laughs> but the issue I want the teams to argue over is this. People on benefits should have lots of kids. <laughs> Supporting the statement on behalf of the red team, it's Marcus Brigstock. People on benefits should have lots of kids. Look at that delightful, happy family there, all smiling out of the window, just wondering when the next cheque is going to arrive. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, these are people whose lives are filled with hope. They hope that the pizza will arrive exactly 31 minutes after it's been ordered so that they get it for free. <laughs> these are people who have so many children, eventually, statistically, one of them will be fathered by Jude Law. <laughs> If these families have ten children, there's got to be a chance that at least one of them will be a good one. That's better odds than scratch cards, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's what we're deciding here. Benefit-based families should have loads of children. No one else is going to fill up Liverpool, are they? <laughs> the Scousers aren't leaving. The whole thing takes care of itself because they're convinced they're in the best city in the world. <laughs> they can have it. <laughs> People on benefits should have loads of children. The point is... It makes Daily Mail readers furious. And the more angry they are, the closer they get to having that crucial aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> what are the blue team actually proposing here, ladies and gentlemen, OK? Families on benefit to have lots of children. What's the alternative? Well, it's eugenics. That's what they're proposing here, eugenics and sterilisation. They'll try to hide it from you, sure, but that's what's underneath. Schwastikas, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> These are people who contribute to the economy. You give someone a benefit check, bang, it's gone. They've spent it immediately. Before you can say, don't go into Argos, they've gone into Argos. <laughs> and it's gone. These are the people who buy lottery tickets. They keep the lottery going. Now, the Royal Opera House, it says outside, the Royal Opera House, proudly funded by the National Lottery. That's, that's misleading. It should say the Royal Opera House, proudly funded by dull scum, chavs and asbos. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these people must be free to have as many children as they like, not patronised, not sterilised. Vote for the red team. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus. OK, next up, opposing the statement, it's Rufus Hound. <laughs> now... It's not liberal, uh, it's not fuzzy, it's not friendly, but it is true that people on benefits should not be allowed to have children. Now, I don't say this is some right-wing reactionary. I buy The Guardian and go to my local fair trade cafe where I only eat things made by bees and people who aren't very well. <laughs> now, uh, Marcus has said we're going to suggest we sterilise these people. I'm not going to suggest that. That would then fall to the NHS, a bill that we would then have to pick up. And if there's one thing we also know about the NHS is sterilisation is not really their forte. Uh, <laughs> my uncle went in for a cold, came out minus a leg and some sort of disease that actually ate his eye. <laughs> <laughs> if you are good at having lots of kids, you should be paid for those kids. We should just buy those kids. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the use we could put those kids to, right? 
The ugly ones, the weak ones, we'll boil them down for glue. <laughs> the fat obese ones, that is just pure energy storage. Let's get them on the cycle machines, yeah? Come on, fatty! Cycle! Cycle! We don't have to feed them, and that is a sustainable energy resource. <laughs> Global warming comes down. And then, what next? The good-looking ones, right? What do we do with them? We sell them on, right? Madonna, <laughs> Jolie, Elton John. <laughs> this time next year, thanks to the uh, adoption habits of the world's top rock stars, we could be out of this recession and all living, ironically, on benefits. <laughs> that is why you should vote for the blue team. Thank you. Thank you, Rufus. So, Sean and Stephen, is there anything you'd like to say in support of your teammates? Uh, well, I'd, I'd like to uh, maybe take umbrage with the actual argument because I'm sure um, the argument should be, should people be allowed to have more kids? <laughs> if you just walk down in a supermarket, see a little kid go, oh, whoa. Remember the days we could hit kids? Remember those days? <laughs> you could beat kids. Even kids that weren't your own. <laughs> you go into a supermarket, what is that little shit doing? Oof. <laughs> Aisle seven. So let's not <laughs> differentiate between people on benefits. That's my problem, you see. Just to make a point, I'd like to say I think the question should be <laughs> are moths more scary than butterflies? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's always moths. Yeah. It's always moths. <laughs> but anyway, that's we're getting away from the main <laughs> issue there. I think more interestingly is what you're advocating people on benefits. Imagine, imagine you lose your job, which after that speech isn't unlikely. <laughs> You find yourself, you can't get any more work. So, that, if that happened to your own family, how would you feel? <laughs> well, I, 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 I lose my job and I go home and I say to my son, well, it's been awfully kind of you to pop by. <laughs> Good luck, old son. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you. So, should people on benefits have lots of kids? It's time for the studio audience to decide who made the best case. Hold up your red card if you agree with Marcus, who thinks people on benefit should keep having kids. And your blue card if, like Rufus, you read the Daily Mail. <laughs> so, vote red for Marcus and blue for Rufus. Vote now. Oh, oh, oh. No, the oh. Daily Mail readers in. <laughs> Room full of Nazis. <laughs> so, that looks like a victory for the blue team. Well done, Rufus and Stephen. They convinced our audience that people on benefits should not have lots of kids. Dole scroungers claim thousands upon thousands in benefits. And do you know whose pocket it comes out of? Yours. I've got an offshore account. <laughs> our next round is called Flip Flop, where we find out how well our teams can argue with themselves. I'm going to give one member of each team a statement which they must support until they hear this sound. <laughs> At which point, they must perform a U-turn and argue against themselves. Then flip-flop backwards and forwards every time I press the buzzer. Sean and Stephen will play this one. Sean, you're up first. I'd like you to begin by arguing that Wikipedia is not a real encyclopedia. <laughs> uh, Wikipedia is not a real encyclopedia, because it's not a real encyclopedia, because it exists in cyberspace, doesn't it? It lives in there, in the machine. You can't pick it up, you can't carry it, you can't stand on it. If you want to change a light bulb, you can't throw it at a cat... <laughs> ..or a dog, or a fox, or a badger. <laughs> brilliant, though, isn't it, really? It's brilliant in the way that anyone can make a contribution, which is what is brilliant about it. I can, I can just put something in there. I mean, I, I'm like, I, I can, I'm an expert in something, I can just put my knowledge on there. Happens to be in the massage of robots. So I can put on there and I go, this, you know, this is how you massage robots, and I put it in there, and anyone who wants to look that up can. They can look it up. Which is brilliant news, you know, if you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is good news, though, isn't it? You know, because, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not very good because uh, it's not real. So you don't want to. Who wants a not real thing? So that's why I think it's a real encyclopedia. <laughs> because it's not real. It's very not realness <laughs> makes it real. <laughs> Which, of course, makes it not real. So that's why it's not a real encyclopedia. Thank you very much.
Well done, Sean. Wikipedia is not, of course, a true encyclopedia. At least according to Wikipedia, which defines encyclopedia as a short, rubbery, oblong thing. <laughs> Personally, I love Wikipedia. You could go as far as to say, I'm a Wikipedia file. <laughs> Rufus and Stephen, what did you make of Sean's performance? Uh, not my problem is I wasn't quite sure if you were pro Wikipedia or against it. Oh, for That's Christ's sake, Stephen, That's you don't the understand the game here. <laughs> <laughs> when, when the buzzer goes, you switch. When the buzzer goes, you change your mind. Yeah. You didn't argue <laughs> one case or the other, you know, to convince me. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was very careful, very clever. <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK, thank you. Stephen, you're up next. I'd like you to start off by arguing that it's unacceptable to pee in the shower. Right, it is unacceptable to pee in the shower, uh, and I think it's quite... It's as uh, unacceptable as showering in the toilet. <laughs> Nobody does that unless you're in a Premier Inn. <laughs> it's just quite relaxing and... <laughs> Who in this room has never, ever, honestly, pissed in the shower? <laughs> Who has pissed in the shower? <laughs> Be honest, I can't hear you. D don't lie to me. <laughs> done it's exciting we love it you're in the shower the water's falling down cascading and you just need something just trickle down and tickle your inner thigh then you uh. see the steam rising and you think good god what have i become <laughs> oh. think about what you're doing ladies and gentlemen peeing in the shower isn't something to be proud of <laughs> unless of course you're into water sports and then <laughs> Oh, my God, you're trying to aim for the face. It's brilliant. Um, <laughs> but if you think about it, um, uh, um, the urine is 95% water. The English Channel is also 95% urine. <laughs> and we don't have any problems swimming that. Hey, look at me, uh, look at me. Oh, push the turd out of the way. <laughs> um, but all I'm trying to say to you folks is that peeing in the shower is just... It's, it's just one of those things... You, you lose all your social connections. Your friends will not want to come and visit you anymore. Who wants to go and visit a person that's got a yellow-stained bath? <laughs> that you can write your name in? <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Well, flip-flop. I always insist on having a shower after any kind of sport or physical exercise, which means I last showered in 1973. <laughs> OK, time for the studio audience to decide who flipped and who flopped. If you thought Stephen flip-flopped best about weeing in the shower, vote blue. But if you thought Sean flip-flopped best about Wikipedia, then vote red. So it's blue cards for Stephen or red cards for Sean. Vote now. <laughs> That's a lot closer than I thought yeah, it was going to yeah. be. <laughs> so, a blue majority there. Commiserations to Sean, but congratulations to Stephen. <laughs> Join us after a break when we'll be finding out whether real life should be more like EastEnders and whether our studio audience are happy to let these two people have sex. <laughs> Don't go away. Welcome back to Argumental, a show that stirs up more trouble than Gordon Ramsay judging an all-female whisking competition. <laughs> right, next up is Slideshow. One member of each team will again be debating a controversial issue, but this time I want them to illustrate their argument using a series of pictures which they've never seen before. Sean and Rufus, you're playing this one. Sean, I'd like you to start by arguing that real life should be more like EastEnders. Here's your first picture. <clears throat> Oh, thanks. Of course, it'd be great if real life was more like East Enders, wouldn't it? Apart from the obviously relentless shouting, it'd be much more forgiving. Like, you, for example, you could have sex with someone's nan and everyone goes a bit mental for a few weeks. Six months later, it's all forgotten about. Nobody ever mentions it again. But the least you'd expect in real life is a nickname, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and especially if you did it, if you took them on a day trip to Stonehenge and left the poor old deer in the middle of the circle to be sacrificed by druids. 
which sounds implausible, could easily be the plot of next week's EastEnders. <laughs> and then, and then you'd have a boy band. Take that, yes. But imagine if Take That turned up on EastEnders. Imagine how shit that would be. <laughs> I think I'm the only person in this country who still thinks they're shit. <laughs> Take that, you're shit! <laughs> so, that would be, uh, like, equally a, a, a situation that you could have on EastEnders, <laughs> you know, or you could have, <laughs> like, <laughs> dots could go to the moon. Quite <laughs> easily. <laughs> so, oh, and then the Queen would come round and she'd have a look at a picture of Dot because she can't be able to lift her head up and look at the real one. <laughs> John Rufus, I'd like you to argue the opposite, that real life should not be more like EastEnders. Here's your first picture. <laughs> of course real life shouldn't be more like EastEnders. If real life was more like EastEnders, all we'd have is endless shouting at each other, misery, depression, <laughs> effect. I think my next picture goes some way towards proving uh, what I'm talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> And what I'm really talking about is the incessant drama that if our real lives were like EastEnders, uh, how our real lives would be. Uh, you'd have maybe a young man who uh, had a good-looking mum <laughs> and she's dead. And <laughs> you can't really be sad for him anymore because the next week it's all moved on. Or well, what's the plot this week? Oh, it's about his brother. What about his brother? Different dad. <laughs> I think this next picture really begins to uh, sum up what we're getting uh. at here. <laughs> if real life was more like EastEnders, so many kids on that have no idea who their real dads are that all the male characters in it would have to dress like they were in Fathers for Justice. <laughs> uh. um, yes, there was a time when we could look at Walford as a representation maybe of our own hopes, dreams and aspirations. But it's gone on so long, it's now so contorted that maybe we loved it once, but we certainly don't want our real lives to be like it. Because if they were, then there would be a real Ian Beale. <laughs> that is a chance you should not be prepared to take. So, I think that is a watertight argument that... Real life should not be more like EastEnders, and I urge you to vote for the blue team. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Marcus and Stephen, would either of you like to pitch anything into this debate? <laughs> life would be awful if it were like EastEnders. You live in a street where everyone knows your business, every week somebody's being run over or shot by someone. It's rubbish! <laughs> well, I think a very good case for life being more like EastEnders is, for, for example, they, it would save the planet. Because, I mean, they never go anywhere. Their carbon footprint on EastEnders <laughs> is nothing. They go for across the square, they stop in the middle, if they want to have a sad moment, they go on the bench and go, oh, I feel a bit sad. <laughs> and if it's a busy week, there's like a queue, they have to get tickets like a deli, go, I'm on the sad bench, fuck off. <laughs> Thank you. So it's time for our studio audience to decide who made the best case. Should real life be more like EastEnders? It's a red card for Sean, who says it should, and a blue one for Rufus, who says it shouldn't. Vote now. Oh, we might actually have to count them. <laughs> it's close. By a whisker, a victory for the Reds. Well done, Sean. Well done, Sean. <laughs> You've convinced the audience that real life should be more like EastEnders. I love EastEnders. My favourite bit was where Phil slept with Grant's wife, Sharon, and then Grant discovered that Phil knew and beat him up in the Queen Vic. <laughs> then Grant slept with Tiffany and she got pregnant and left Grant for Tony and then came back and she died. That was a good bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's our popular culture round now, where tonight's debate is on a question which has nothing to do with me. Old age. <laughs> yes, old age are three score years and ten. Or if you're Scottish, one score year in ten. <laughs> but is it true that you're only as old as the person you feel? Let's find out with the help of tonight's special guests, Brian and Shirley. <laughs> Marcus, you're up first. Meet Brian and Shirley. Good evening, Good Brian evening. and Shirley. How'd you do, How Shirley? Do you do? Very nice to meet you, Brian. A pleasure. <laughs> With that in mind, the statement I want you to argue is this. Old people shouldn't be allowed to have sex. 
Who said? Who said? Well, please, allow me to explain. Right. Brace yourselves. <laughs> A lot of people will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that sex gets better with age. That's not technically true. You're just more grateful when it happens. <laughs> Listen, there is a certain age... There's a certain age where the body's fluids stop running. <laughs> now, no, I don't want to be too graphic, but I don't know if anyone here has ever tried to eat muesli without any milk. <laughs> Be honest, ladies and gentlemen, the only thing that should be inserted into people of this age is a hearing aid, a catheter, or a worthless original. <laughs> huh? This... This is a fine-looking lady, and I'm sure you've led a rich and beautiful and wonderful life. But trust me, ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to see a cock in that mouth. <laughs> <laughs> with yourselves. No. <laughs> Listen, with old age comes memory loss, ladies and gentlemen. It's perfectly normal and perfectly acceptable for an elderly person to walk into a room and go, now, what did I come in here for? That's not so nice when you're having sex, though, is it? <laughs> People say, you know, once you have that experience, it lasts longer. No disrespect, but, yeah, it would. Take me around 40 years to get one off in there. <laughs> the line. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, old people should not be allowed to have sex. You know it makes sense. Folk <laughs> right. Well done. Next up, opposing Marcus, but supporting Brian and Shirley's needs, it's Steve. <laughs> And I want you to argue that old people should be allowed to have sex. First and foremost, who here can deny these two good people the pleasures of the flesh? <laughs> Look at this. Put your hand down. Put your hand down. Look at this man's face. <laughs> That's the face of a man who needs it. <laughs> Now, you are a couple, right? Yes. Yeah. How long have you guys been together? Over 40, 40 years. years. Over 40 years. Did you hear that? Yeah. 40 years. And is it still going strong? Yes. Of course it is. How are we meant to police this kind of thing? Are we going to have little grandkids ringing the helpline? Nan and granddad are sucking again. <laughs> <laughs> and also define old people. What's what old? I mean, look at the lovely John Sargent. He's smiling behind that desk. Not because he's happy working here. There's somebody under there looking after him. <laughs> right now. <laughs> the Kama Sutra, the Bible of sex and sensuality, that was not written by an 18-year-old spotty youth sitting in his bedroom with a box of man-sized tissues <laughs> beavering away. <laughs> it wasn't. When you do any kind of activity, the more you do it, the more experience you will have at it. So, by the definition, their 40 years of rumpy-pumpy must be explosive. <laughs> God, I just can't wait to hear you go, wow! <laughs> I, well, I can, but... <laughs> and you look, you're, you're going to start looking at old people in different ways, you know? You get a phone call, oh, Granny's had a fall, and you'll be thinking, oh, she had a hip done again. No, she had a fall because she's having rough sex. <laughs> I know it's something we don't want to think about, but it happens. <laughs> if I get to your age, sir, and I can still bang one off, I say salute you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you to vote for the blue. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Sean and Rufus, would you like to add anything in support of your teammates? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, I think Stephen closes on a very sentient point there, John. As an older man, if Marcus were to stop you from having sex, how would he earn his pocket money?
<laughs> I'm saying maybe instead of banning old people having sex, let's instead change the way we feel about old people having sex and make it more acceptable. Because you know how you have, like, a penny for the guy? What if we had, you know, wank off an old bloke? <laughs> Arguing this from such a young perspective. Oh, the things you do when you're young, you should be able to do forever. Listen, I was into breakdancing and skateboarding when I was a teenager. I don't want to be doing that when I'm 80 either. I'll look like a twat. <laughs> and I'd wager that you looked like a twat back then. Exactly. Thank you all. So, should old people be allowed to have sex? Once again, the studio audience will decide who made the best case. It's a blue card for Stephen and Rufus and a red one for Marcus and Sean. Vote now. <laughs> so, that's a win for the Blues. They've convinced the audience that old people should be allowed to have sex. That's great news for Stephen and Rufus and even better news for Brian and Shirley. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you very much. Despite my age, I'm still good in bed. I often get straight off to sleep without even needing a story. <laughs> Time now for the final round and a last chance for our teams to show just how argumental they really are. I'm going to show them a series of images. All they have to do is suggest what argument the picture is proving. OK? Here's your first one. <laughs> this is an argument that if this is where they keep their crockery, you don't want to see where he keeps the cutlery. <laughs> is this an argument for not putting your husband in the dishwasher? <laughs> is this an argument that this is the kind of shrapnel you get if you insist on being a Greek waiter? <laughs> the next one. It's an argument for Ron sealing that decking. <laughs> That's gonna... One bad winter, that'll go on, that'll splinter away, there'll be nothing there. Is they just taking him to the, to the pond and going, see, you could live here, but you can't, because you're in a fish prison. <laughs> Is this uh, an argument for what it must feel like to live in Glasgow but watch programmes set in London? <laughs> Next one. This is an argument that if you are going to have a door policy that allows polar bears into your nightclub, you need better bouncers. <laughs> I imagine this is an argument that Rufus and Stephen will, will support, that you're allowed to have sex with old people and polar bears. <laughs> well, that's fine too. Do you know, Sean, if you can find a way to have sex with a polar bear, <laughs> fucking go for it. <laughs> OK, that's it. So, for the final time, it's down to our studio audience to decide who made the best case tonight. Red for Marcus and Sean, and blue for Rufus and Stephen. Vote now. <laughs> so, it's obviously the red team who won that round, but nevertheless, this week's winners are the blue team. <laughs> Well done, Rufus Ham and Stephen K. Amos. Commiserations to Marcus Brigstock and Sean Locke. That's all we've got time for. Good night. And there's more brand new and exclusive argumental here next Tuesday night. In the meantime, if you head to joindave.co.uk, you can witness exclusive argumental outtakes and also behind the scenes clips. <laughs>